setters. Nicklin Hames wasn't available out with an injury in the first meeting between these teams. She's back tonight. Yeah, and Hames is a difference maker. She is a competitor. Love her style on the court. We should note that Becca Alec is in the lineup. She was banged up, but she got the nod here. And Lexi Rodriguez, the libero. What a stud for Nebraska. Alec did not play last match for John Cook on Friday night at home against Iowa. She's available tonight for the veteran leader of the Huskers in his 23rd season leading the program, Jen Flynn Olberg. Third season as head coach at her alma mater, and her team is rolling. 13 straight wins, the last loss. The last matchup with Nebraska in Lincoln. Again, it went the distance. 15-13 in the fifth. We'll see what the deciding factor is for these powerhouses tonight. Yeah, and the stats for Ohio State on that last matchup was not good. 20 service errors, no aces. So Ohio State looking to get a better serving game this afternoon. We'll dive more into the details as we roll tonight. But let's soak up this atmosphere. As good as it gets here at Cavelli Center, especially in recent years with the Buckeye success, the building has kind of risen up and the fan base is there. Another sold out crowd of about 4,000 ready to enjoy the action here for the Buckeyes and Huskers again. Winner remains atop the standings, deadlocked with Wisconsin for first place in the Big Ten as we head into the final couple of weekends after this. Serve start here for Nebraska and the first point put away up front for the Buckeyes. And that was Adria Powell with the swing and that is someone that has improved so much. Look at this pass right on target. There you see Powell number 16 taking that first swing using the block in order to get a point. Senior Ohio native from Hubbard part of this attack Buckeyes again one on Thursday against Purdue on the road in four sets and a service error there to begin for the Buckeyes. So we'll certainly track that from Gonzalez as you touched on in that last matchup. Zero in the ace category, 20 out of play. It's 20 wasted points against the Huskers. Yeah, they gave the Huskers a set right there with those errors. So, uh, yeah, Ohio State needs to clean that up this afternoon. And Nebraska outblocked Ohio State in that matchup, too, by 10. The big difference in kills. Ohio State had 64 kills to 46 for the Huskers, but ultimately the Buckeyes watched Nebraska get it done, and now Ohio State with defense up front. And the block has to be on for both teams. Both teams run a really good offense, but take a look at how Londot lines up perfectly and takes away the cross-court shot. Well done by Emily Londot. And Powell coming over to get a piece. Buckeyes here at 2-1. <laughs> to the outside, denied by Ohio State. Rolled in by Janesha Moore. Big swing. Kylie Murr getting a piece to keep it alive. Moore gets it over. Bumped up by Rodriguez. Pedraza goes to the outside. Moore and a call at the net. They'll have the Huskers into the net. Well, I expect that these rallies will be extended this afternoon. Nebraska is showing what they do so well on defense. So you got to swing with authority to win points, and that's exactly what Ohio State did there. Got a little bit of a, a bad call for Nebraska into the net, uh, so that's how they got their point. Murr Sr. from Yorktown, Indiana with the serve. Pedraza, back set for Longdock. Off the Nebraska block, and in scramble mode, the Buckeyes can't save it. Nebraska keying on Emily Londot right now. You know, she struggled in their first match up. And so what Ohio State needs to do is make sure that they cover. And someone has to cover deep, because oftentimes those balls that get blocked and go deep in the court, you got to be able to play those transition and get a good swing. Lexi Rodriguez, National Freshman of the Year. Last year for the Huskers, puts that one into the net. And we'll certainly track service numbers, points at a premium when you've got these two strong programs, both in the top six in the nation. Dot ready to serve, touched on it. Audrey, 17 kills for her, but 17 errors. Last match, hitting zero. We'll see if she can get on track, and that's a big cut there for Nebraska on the outside. 
Now take a look at this set by Nicklin Hames. The long set moving forward, setting back, and you can see Ohio State's block a little late because of that set by Hames and just a smash by Longstein on the right pin. Now the sophomore from Waverly, Nebraska, averaging over three kills per set, delivering a big swing. And there's Londa firing away the junior, almost 3.8 kills per set, top five of the Big Ten. And the ball gets set on a dime. Take a look at how Pedraza leads Londot, and you can see number 10, Cubic for Nebraska, is late. She loses track of Londot in the back court and is all the way inside the court, so is not in position to block. When Londot's in the back court, you have to line up with her. That was the concern for John Cook in our conversation with him before this matchup. Five hitters hitting well for Ohio State said, look, we've got to get touches. We can't give them clean kills. Long job. Dot had one on the last point. On this point, cross-court swing handled by Rodriguez. From the back row, that one is long. Good opportunity there, but Kenzie Knuckles can't keep it in. Well, it's interesting to see Kenzie Knuckles as part of the offense. This ball, what a great defensive get by Sarah Sue Morbitzer, but um, yeah, you know, the defense uh, is going to be key here for both teams, and it's going to be fun to watch them both do their thing defensively. Oni Evans now in setting for the Huskers. Runs the middle. Alec denied. And now call at the net. And double contact there on the Huskers. Another point for the Buckeyes. John Cook looking on. Again, his team cruising past Iowa on Friday night. They out hit. The Hawkeyes 305 and held Iowa to negative hitting percentage. But a team with a better, or better offensive thrust and offensive firepower like Ohio State here. Watching the Buckeyes up three, although Nebraska getting one back. Now here's Kubik hitting from the right side. Typically she's a left side attacker in that serve receive pattern. She'll swing from the right and show and she can get it done from either pin. First team all Big Ten performer with a key point to stop that little Ohio State burst. Pedraza going back on the slide for Raider. And at the net, the Buckeyes find a way through the Husker block. Well, what's impressive so far for the Buckeyes is they're covering the first swing and giving their team an opportunity to swing again for points. Gabby Gonzalez wiping the ball off the block, hitting the side of the ball, swiping it off the block for a point. Another Buckeye ranking top ten of the conference in kills per set, about three and a half. Morbidson with another nice play in the back row. Speaking of good plays, Rodriguez laying out to keep that one up. Pedraza just the timing off on that and the Huskers will take the point Yeah, that was an odd play usually the offensive timing for Ohio State is on but look at that dig by Gonzalez Sorry Rodriguez on that one Now Rodriguez 19 digs in the win against the Buckeyes in Lincoln in September and a service error Another one there for the Huskers. And that one from Cubic. Couple of service errors already on Nebraska, one on Ohio State. Buckeyes by four. Just underway here in this best of five. And the winner keeps pace with Wisconsin atop the Big Ten standings. Great swing from Allie Batenhorst, the sophomore from Houston. Well, what I like about Batenhorst's swing there is it was flat, and she was intentionally going high off the blocker's hands. Batenhorst, you know, she missed the match against Ohio State, was injured, so her presence this afternoon is going to be huge for the Huskers. Eight kills, five blocks against Iowa on Friday, and an early contribution from the sophomore here. Pedraza runs it quick. Another opportunity. Kubik keeps it alive. And that's another termination there from Batenhorst. And Maddie Kubik with a great dig. Puts her setter in a great position to run an offense here. You can see Hames pushing that ball to the outside. And then Batenhorst doing what she does so well. Variety of shots that time. Again, chooses to use the block for a point. Able to work it off the block of Londa. 
serve from Haynes. Power at the net of the second swing. One more time, cross court handled by Rodriguez. Kubik out of the back. And it'll be point for the Huskers. Uh, double contact there against the Buckeyes. And the point goes to Lexi Rodriguez. A spectacular dig to save the point, giving her team another opportunity to swing for a win. Nice job by the freshman of the year, defensive player of the year, Lexi Rodriguez. Certainly spectacular start to her career last year in Lincoln, and it has continued in her sophomore season. She'll bump it up there for Batenhorst. And again, the Huskers starting to get into a little groove. They have pulled even at nine apiece. Yeah, when an outside hitter can hit out of system well, that's a sign of a really good team. And that time, Batenhorst delays her approach, hits the high point of the ball. And again, she's just having a heyday using that block. Off the serve of Haynes. Big swing, Gonzalez again. Certainly Nebraska king on her, but she solves the riddle. Yeah, and I feel like Mac Pedraza was setting the ball a little too low for her outsides, but not this time. Look at the point of contact. It's right at the highest point for Gabby Gonzalez. She swings, reaching right over her right shoulder, delivers a big one for her team. Second kill for Gonzalez coming off a double-double against Purdue on Thursday. Last time out, 18 kills, 10 digs. Her eighth double-double of the season. Another service error by Gonzalez. You don't want to uh, have too many of those tally up. We've already talked about the first uh, meeting and how Ohio State's serving game was not great. So Jen Flynn Oldenburg will definitely try to calm her team down from the service line. And some of that is trying to serve against Nebraska, which allows the fewest aces per set in the Big Ten. Again, one of their great defensive categories that they so often become problematic for the opposition. And the block game is there too. Lead the Big Ten in that category and the shutdown there on Janaysha Moore. What I love about this block is Whitney Lonstein, number 13, sets up the block cross court. Take a look at where she goes up and then gives Horde the opportunity to line up and take away cross court. That's a great job from a right side blocker. That's Whitney Lonstein for Nebraska. From down forward in front, first lead of this opening set for the Huskers. And it's short lived. Even the great skill of Rodriguez can't stop that rocket. You know, one of the things I would tell my team is don't hit the ball anywhere near that kid. Even though she couldn't control that dig, typically she does. So you want to try and work around, uh, hit a variety of shots, keep it away from the best defensive player uh, for Nebraska. 11-11, Huskers hitting 150 at the outset. Ohio State 130. And the middle is open there for Nebraska. Caitlin Horde able to get that finish. We know about her block game leading the nation. Uh, John Cook wants to get more offense out of all the middles. Pajamas in the back set. Londot goes off speed. Great get there from Haynes. Longstein done. Cubic. Her tip handle. More with power off the block. Long dot off hands and down. I love these extended rallies. We are seeing the absolute best in both teams right now. Multiple swings, multiple digs in order to get the point. Look at this great defensive play by Nicklin Hames. She is one of the best defensive setters in the country. And then Long dot. Wow. Good high hands attack. That's a big point for Ohio State. And another one. Knock long in the service category for Gonzalez. Again, we'll see how the crowd reacts to that here. Cavelli Center, again, become one of the great home court atmospheres in the conference in the country for this number six ranked team in the nation. Power from Janesha Moore, she can bring it. Well, she is a gutsy outside hitter. We talked about how, you know, maybe not hit the ball to Rodriguez. That time, she did not care. She unleashed the ball hard cross court. Take a look. She passes the ball, gets all the way outside, and then finds a way to rip the ball inside the middle blocker's hand. And just, wow, the power behind that swing. 
Second kill of the match for Moore, who had 21 kills, hit 300 of the first meeting with Nebraska in September. Swing from Lindsey Crossy. And boy, Ohio State Pedraza can really mix it up. Yeah, you know, Londot's having a great time right now as a back row attacker. The dig moves Londot forward, and then you see that opens up the net for Londot to hit at because the middle blocker for Nebraska has to respect the middle and outside for Ohio State. Four kills already for Londot hitting 375. Buckeyes run the middle. Nebraska ready for it. And now into the net are the Buckeyes. Point Huskers, and we have our seventh tie already of this <laughs> opening set, and we're not to 15. It's going to be a long one tonight. You know, again, both of these teams absolutely bringing out the best in each other. We're seeing great defensive plays already in set one. Lots of back and forth action, and somebody needs to elevate their level of play to step ahead here in this first set. Going far side, and the stick there for Gonzalez. I feel like Mac Pedraza is starting to get into a rhythm as a setter. She's pushing the ball perfectly. Tempo location is great for Gabby Gonzalez. Gabby Gonzalez can be a go-to finisher for the Buckeyes. Going to her a few times, and it's Ohio State by one. Back and forth here in this opening set. Uh, the showdown between number four, Nebraska, number six, Ohio State. Buckeyes up 15-14. Hope you're enjoying it. Jason Epp, Audrey Flaw, uh, Big Ten Network crew. Again, as these two teams look to keep pace with Wisconsin for first in the conference. Bumped up from Rodriguez. And boy, Batenhorst has been spectacular here at the outset for the Huskers. Yeah, there's really no defense for that. When you go high off the blocker's hands and that ball gets ricocheted out of bounds that high, well, there's nothing you can do. So that is the fingertip of Mac Pedraza that hit that ball. That is an outstanding big-time shot by Batenhorst. Four swings, four kills. My math isn't great, but I think that's a 1,000. <laughs> A beautiful beginning for the sophomore, looking to give the Huskers a lift here on the rope. Pedraza. Rodriguez, again, a couple of off-speed shots. Huskers ready to handle it, and then Londot bails out Ohio State. Right now, Mac Pedraza sets to the outside. They're kind of dying low to the zone. So what does she do? She's got an outlet in the backcourt that will deliver a kill. It's always nice to have Emily Londa back there to clean up the play for you. Pedraza now back to serve. When that happens, Audrey, is that respect for the Nebraska block and a little indecision there? Yeah, I just feel like Mac is a little bit off on the outside set. But other than that, you know, once she gets her rhythm, I think the outside hitters are going to feel more of a rhythm. That was another one that the outside hitter had to make an adjustment, and Londot did it wonderfully. Yeah, you know, part of being a good hitter is taking any ball you get and doing something positive with it. So you got to find a way to score. Londot doing her job here today. Timeout here for Nebraska. Ohio State jumps back in front by two in set number one. Well, in the first matchup against Nebraska, Emily Londot's hitting percentage was zero. So far tonight, it's 455. Yeah, and she's doing a great job in that shot right there, that back row attack. It puts Nebraska's left side blocker in a bit of a pickle. That blocker needs to make a decision. Do I follow Londot and just stay at home along the net? Or do I go with the setter and help with the middle? That's why having Londot there as a back row attacker on that right side, that's so effective. It opens things up along the net. Londot doing her job today for the Buckeyes. And picking up where she left off in the road win against Purdue on Thursday when she had a season high 19 kills and 11 digs, her ninth double-double of the season. And a big reason Ohio State is in front towards the tail end of this opening set. Rodriguez, more stellar work from her to keep things rolling for the Huskers. Fake to Horde outside, Batenhorst denied for the first time. That's Londa. 
Well, it's all on dot, and what made the block possible is a set that was dying into her hand. So take a look at this ball. There's really nowhere that Baton Horse could go. She couldn't go high off the hands. The set dictates what you can do as an outside hitter, and that time Baton Horse just went low seam with it. That's all that she could do with it. And Baton Horse again has been the great scorer in the last stretch for the Huskers as Horde changes that. Before that point, Baton Horst had four kills in a nine point stretch for the Huskers, and then Horde elevating big time for this. Yeah, Ani Evans, look at how she sets the ball right between the two blockers, and they're not there quick enough to have any hands on that attack. And wow, Horde just puts it straight down. She popped that one. Transfer in from Penn State has been superb in moving to Lincoln. Big swing for Longstein, handled by the Buckeyes, and they turn it around into a point. Oh, the crowd loves the play of Kylie Murr. Take a look at this play. Kylie Murr with this outstanding dig off of her block. And then a big time point, and Gonzalez looks right at Murr and says, it was all you. Wow, what reaction to move. Yeah and just jolt to her left, keep that up. Second in Ohio State program history in digs and a chance potentially if this match goes long, <laughs> yeah. get that number one spot tonight or in the very near future. Yeah, one of the best signs of a defensive player is that change of direction, that quick foot movement and that push off. And that's what Murr showed in that play that uh, went off the block. She was able to pursue that ball with ease. Two superb liberos here in this matchup, each with six digs already in the opening set, respectively. And boy, big serve for the Huskers and the ace from Knuckles. Yeah, take a look at this serve, and it is high, and then it just dies. And that ball is well in. So an error there by Kylie Murr. She needs to follow it to the line and call it out from the line. Boy, that really is a knuckleball there for Knuckles. This one handled better by the Buckeyes, but they can't put it away. And Nebraska has suddenly pulled even. Yeah, and we see ourselves in a tie again. And both coaches talked about how it's so important at this point when sets are on the line, you've got to find somebody who is a closer, who has the confidence and uh, just has the guts to make big plays at big moments. On the overpass, Ford forced to go with the tip. And the Buckeyes able to use the Nebraska block to stop that mini 3-0 Husker run. Well, in set one, it's been all Emily Londot. Take a look again at how she gets high, uses Ford's block, Ford's slower on closing to that pin, and hands were out and available to swing into. Yeah, service error there for the Buckeyes. That is number four here in this opening set. Again, 20 of them in the five-set loss against no aces at Nebraska, and right now they're starting to pile up here. 20 apiece. Pedraza once more. First contact over there from Kubik, and that's easy pickings for the Buckeyes. Well, Nebraska gets the dig, but unfortunately, it goes over the other side. Look at that. Uh, Janesha Morse, boy, she's got some great pops. And then you see the middle for Ohio State cleaning it up. Riley Raider with the kill. And yeah, great vision there for Raider to find the open spot of the floor. Ah! Well, Longstein launched it, but point for the Buckeyes. Long dot ready to serve. Match high seven kills here in this opening set. Ames looking for Kubik 
And that may have been the best rhythm on offense yeah. for the Huskers in this set. I agree with you. And Kubik got the pass, and she is so underrated as a serve receiver. She does a great job of controlling the ball and then gets all the way outside. And boy, she's got some hops too, right over top of the block on that cross court shot. Just the second kill this opening set for Kubik, and now the service misfire there for the Huskers. And that puts Ohio State two points away from striking first in the best of five. Sarah Sue Morbitzer putting it in play. Kane, back set. Gonzalez denied. Buckeyes run the middle. Huskers ready for it. Flying out of the back row is Knuckles. Good get by Londa. Haynes wants Cuban. But draws it. And that's out of the reach of Gonzalez. And you see Jen Flynn Oldenburg, coach for Ohio State, coming off the bench, just settling her team down. They wanted that point. That would have been a huge point for Ohio State. And it wasn't because of, you know, a non-dig. They were playing defense great. It was that outside hitter rhythm with the setter that was off the mark on that play. First contact from the Buckeyes. Back to the Huskers' side. Work on the slide there for Allen. Guess who? Londot with a missile. Londot hitting 467. Set point right here for Ohio State. Timeout for the Huskers and the Buckeyes and their fans feeling it. And these fans haven't seen a lot of difficulty for this squad so far at home. Ohio State been outstanding, 18 and five overall. Get a bit of a scuffle in a rigorous non-conference schedule where every foe they played, played in the NCAA tournament last year and on this 13 match winning streak, the numbers have been stellar. Well, you're absolutely right, Jason. And what the 13 match win streak does, it builds confidence. They have been in these situations, these tight sets before, and they know how to handle themselves and they are composed and ready for a fight. So those numbers speak for themselves, awesome numbers. But I think what's even bigger than that is you know what it's like to play in these tight situations. Ohio State does very, very well. So we'll see how they come out of the timeout. I hope I didn't jinx them. It's a good one here in the first set. And the Huskers only conference loss coming against Wisconsin on the road in that much ballyhooed matchup in Madison. Since then, four straight victories for Nebraska. 22 wins and 24 tries overall. But this crowd here amped up. <laughs> Trying to stick it to the court Huskers here <laughs> on the road. What more do you want? Big Ten volleyball right here. What an atmosphere. This is awesome. Set point, Buckeyes. <laughs> Batenhorst delivers again. She has been the kill leader a half dozen now for the sophomore. You know, John Cook talks about how she's fiery. He loves how she plays. But right now, what she's doing is she's being that person that's delivering key kills for her team. Second crack to put this opening set away for Ohio State. And a tough first contact from Gonzalez. Great serve for Nebraska and Allen. This is, Ohio State. Yeah, this is a key serve right here. Picking on the outside hitter for Ohio State. Becca Alec just delivers a perfect serve for her team. And I tell you what, you're going to win based on serving and passing. You see it there. An easy, quick point for Nebraska. Now it's anybody's set. Two aces, three service errors for the Huskers. Again, no aces, four service errors for the Buckeyes. Let's take you back to that matchup in Lincoln, September 24th. Again, it went the distance. 
Ohio State won the second and third sets to go up 2-1, held the Huskers to under 100 percentage, those two sets hitting. Fourth set, Nebraska hit 345 and won it, and then they survived in the fifth, 15-13, and yeah, that tells you all about the atmosphere there in Lincoln for that one. Yeah, it was a battle, and they won the war. Nebraska feeling so good about that one. And you've got to when you're tested and the, the match goes long and it comes down to the fifth set and you win by two. I mean, that shows right there just the intensity of that match. Overall, in that match, the Buckeyes actually out hit the Huskers 151 to 140, but two teams that are so strong, all the little things seem to get magnified even more. And the Huskers found a way at home. You know, the standings here in the Big Ten at the start of this match again, Wisconsin winning last night against Maryland. So the victor of this one stays atop the table with the Huskers. And again, some rigorous challenges for all three title contenders down the stretch in Big Ten play. We'll dive more into that as this one progresses. 24 all, Alex Sir. And it's long. It's all about serving and passing. Becca Alec served an ace and then an error. So advantage here for Ohio State. Third set point for the Buckeyes. Pedraza's turn. Hames. Big swing from Lonstein on the back row. Buckeyes fighting to keep it alive, but into the net is Ohio State, and we have our 12th tie of the opening set. Well, this is everything we expected from this matchup. Neither team showing any signs of dying here in the first set. Such competitive play right now. This is a good one. We get bonus volleyball here right from the jump in the opening set at 25 apiece. Nicklin Hames and ready to put it into play. Pedraza for a long dot in the middle, and that was a monster. A statement swing by Londot, but give credit to the great pass there. Sarah Sue Morbitzer, she is going to be a serving target for Nebraska. She handles that one beautifully. Ninth kill opening set for Londot. Yet another chance for Ohio State to snag this opening set. For Lonstein delivering in the clutch. Just her second kill, but it's massive. Well, it's so important to be in system in these uh, tight situations. And Rodriguez, a great pass, but look at Lonstein, how she elevates, swinging so big. Gutsy play there. Coming off an 11 kill. Outing in the three set win on Friday. Pressure packed swing for Lonstein. Moore off the Husker block. Kubik finds a way to the four. And now Nebraska with an opportunity to steal the set. The key to that, winning that point, was the touch off the block. And Nebraska able to handle it defensively and get a big transition swing. So Kubik finds the seam. Timeout taken by Ohio State. And now the Huskers putting a little pressure on the Buckeyes with a chance for the first time to snag the set. Yeah, in that previous play, you know, Nebraska was just, just popping the ball in the middle of the court, and that's the blocks ball. You cannot have balls just being thumped and down your throat in the middle of the court. So Ohio State has to clean up their block, but it all came from that beautiful pass from Nebraska. Now, they are up by one. So Ohio State, like you said, is feeling the pressure to get a good pass, stay in system, and get a big swing on this first attack. And the Buckeyes ready to see how they can handle things as Nebraska tries to put this set away. The band loving life, and Batenhorse has made Husker fans love life to watch the way she's played, averaging about two kills per set. Got more than that, a half dozen here in this opening set. Yeah, she's so skilled at doing just that. You saw three swings and three off the block 
and points. So she is a really, really good outside hitter because she has a variety of shots, but she's been wiping it off Ohio State's block all afternoon. Two outside hitters with big numbers here in the opening set. On the right side, expected. On the left side, maybe a little unexpected, but Nebraska will take it, and it may prove to be the difference maker here in this opening set for the Huskers. Serve coming to try to end it. Pedraza will go to the middle, and boy, why not? Londa is there, keep feeding. Kyla Murr taking the pass, putting it right in Matt Pedraza's hands, and then that two ball in the middle, there's one block, and Londot just rips it to uh, the right back area of the court for a point. Londot at 17 kills that first match against the Huskers, already set, er, 10 here in the opening set. That from the Huskers is long, and the Buckeyes one more time will look to Kylie Murr to end it. Short serve. Good get from Knuckles, but boy, another key effort from Longstein to keep us rolling. Oh, what can you say? You know, you have to praise the courage and the composure. This set's on the line, and not only is it a great serve received by Knuckles, but a great swing by Longstein on the right pin. Well, two big swings from Longstein here in the bonus stretch of this set, and now the block game there. Longstein up front with Alec. Well, Longstein has a sixth sense on how to line up on the sets that go to the outside. We're gonna see how she lines up and takes that cross-court shot. So, big celebration from her. She knows she did her job on the right pin. Nebraska, another opportunity to seal the deal, set one. Pedraza has to track back for that. And Londa makes it work. This is special <laughs> stuff. Ah, uh, special is right. Matt Pedraza running all over the court, just puts the ball high to her best hitter. And you can see there's not much area to swing into, but Londa finds that little gap between the left side blocker's left hand and the pin. 29 apiece. Longstein, another big cut. Buckeyes got it. And Londa, all the power, and now the precision. That's a smart play by Londot. You know, the defense is going to be back on the heels because she's been letting bombs rip all night. And then she takes this and at the last minute opens up, palm under the ball, tips it right over in the block. Open area of Nebraska's court. 16 ties, six lead changes, six set point for the Buckeyes. The sequel would live up to the original blockbuster. Was Act One not compelling? 31 29, the Buckeyes prevail. Action packed. Take a breather, get some refreshments, and come on back for more of that here from Columbus on Big Ten Network. Volleyball on the Big Ten Network is powered by Unleaded 88, Engine Smart, Earth Kind. Yeah, the Buckeyes powering through the <laughs> Cornhuskers in that opening set, but it took a while. 31-29, the final count, thanks in large part to the performance of Emily Longdot, who was spectacular. Yeah, uh, a flex type of performance in that first set 12 kills in one set that's unbelievable so the question is how will nebraska adjust most of her kills came from that right back attack 
and we'll see if Nebraska's block just stays home with her or will they get sucked into the middle of the court like they did in that first set. So if they do, it opens a lot of space along the net for Emily to swing into. So we'll see if Nebraska has an adjustment defensively to stop her. Huskers did a wonderful job on the other two key hitters for Ohio State. Gabby Gonzalez hit under 100. Janisha Moore hit in the negative, but still, it was Londot that carried the way for Ohio State and some questions there on that opening point. It will go to Nebraska here to start off the second set. Well, let's take a look at this. We haven't seen this, a back row attack from Lonstein. That is great, and it was so close. Kylie Murr thought it was out, but boy, that one just kissed the line. Well, it is in, no challenge forthcoming. And the Huskers jump on top of the outset. Morbitzer stretching out to keep that one up. Haynes working for Longstein, who really seems to have found something tail end of that set and it carries over. Yeah, you want someone to elevate their level of play number 13 right there for Nebraska has done just that. She's gotten so many swings and two key ones so far in the second set. Look at how she hammers the line. Such a skilled athlete for the Huskers. Seven kills in the five setter against the Buckeyes in September. Already five kills here. And service misfire side out to Ohio State fifth service error for the Huskers against two aces again Buckeyes committed four service errors no nothing in the ace category but they got away with it there by grabbing that opening set win Gonzalez triggering the play Change for Longstein Powell got a piece Pedraza, Murr bumping it up, tight at the net. And the Huskers able to handle things on the joust. Yeah, it's so important if you're a non-setter. You've got to be able to either overhand set a perfect second ball or bump set. Kylie Murr trapping Londot on that one. Not much Londot could do. She tried to put it in the block and play it, but that's an easy point for the Huskers. Huskers here. In this series all time, 18-9 advantage against Ohio State. Buckeyes won here last November in three tight sets. And it's Ohio State with the early advantage this time around. Hames down to keep it alive. Murr with another opportunity to set a teammate. And that one beautifully done. Long dot goes cross court. Yeah, that's a better bump set by Kylie Murr to set up Londot. Let's take a look at the defense by Mac Pedraza putting the ball into Londot or into Kylie Murr's lap. And she delivers a good platform set to that kid right there, Londot. Been on fire all day. Still over 500 hitting percentage wise. And there's Caitlin Horde smacking her third kill. Yet at Penn State last year, almost three kills per set. The block number is higher, offense lower, but when she gets going, she can get real hot. Yeah, I like the route she ran there. She's in the right-ish area of the court, kind of circles around, faces the setter, puts herself in a nice opportunity to get the set. Moore whipping one wide, and the Huskers stretching the lead out here to three. Yeah, you mentioned it already. The outside hitters for Ohio State, their efficiency really isn't there yet. And so we'll see um, if they can elevate those numbers a little bit to help Ohio State's cause. Pedraza. Haynes going back for Cuban. Gonzalez trying to make something for Londa. Cubic cross court. Boy, good effort from Murr, but not able to stop that. Cubic does a really good job there of taking a little bit off, thumb down, places it rather than puts power behind it. So a nice skilled shot there by Maddie Cubic for the Huskers. And she's had good results in this building before. We mentioned that matchup last year, Ohio State won it, but she had a great effort with 18 kills, hitting 400. And that last goal line here for Gardison. Now the Huskers at the net. Finding success.
great defensive play here. Jen Flynn Oldenburg sees that this one is getting a little out of hand. Nebraska up by five. She calls a timeout. Down a set, fourth ranked Nebraska up five. Early stages set to the largest lead for either team tonight right now with this five point advantage. Nice response from the Huskers to begin this latest outing here against the Buckeyes. Moore. Rodriguez. Superb skill from the back again. Off speed from Longstein. Moore follows suit. Power coming from Nebraska. And the Buckeyes looking for Londa. Gonzalez. Nice pass from the back. Hames down to keep it up. Pedraza. Another first contact from Hames. That means somebody else had to set it up. And it worked wonderfully. Cubic goes cross court. Well, Hames is so good defensively. I think that's one of the things that makes her one of the top setters in the country is that not only does she set, but look at how she just pursues balls. She never gives up. She is a gutsy defensive player. She's an all-round good player, not just a great setter. 5-0 Husker surge. Moore trying to end it, but can't because Hames has another defensive delight. Long dot from a standing spot with that swing. Rodriguez. Cuban. More at the ready. Man, the defense in this game is just <laughs> awesome. It is a treat to watch, isn't it? You, it's breathtaking because these swings are so powerful. And then the guts of the liberos here. This is Kylie Murr just letting it hit her and then getting her hips under the ball so that that ball goes straight up. If her hips are behind, that ball goes over the net. So not only does she have courage, but great technique to keep the ball on her side of the net. Melanda picking up where she left off. 12 kills opening set and two of the first three points for the Buckeyes here in set two. Oh, good work from Knuckles diving down and another stellar defensive get for the Huskers leads to a point. Well, if you're John Cook, you've got to love the defensive effort, as you said. Take a look at how Knuckles just lays out. She takes pride in that backcourt position and then she celebrates two-handed slap on the court. She knows that she executed that play and gave her offense an opportunity to swing for a point. And for Becca Alec, again, didn't play against Iowa on Friday night, John Cook telling us she's been a bit banged up, able to get that left-handed kill, her second put away of the night. Huskers by a half dozen. Boy, more phenomenal work from Rodriguez on the deck. More. You're not going to be perfect when you're facing fireball after fireball. Yeah, and you just have to stay in the battle and know that you're going to have to take multiple swings in order to get a point. But Nebraska's defense, wow, two great plays there. And then more, just you have to have the courage to take multiple swings, as I said. It's not going to come easy. Can't think you're going to get one and win because this Nebraska defense is so solid in the backcourt. Moore continuing to bring it, but still in the negative. Three kills, four errors on the night. Murr, rock solid. Call it the net. Into the net are the Huskers. Buckeyes trying to reel Nebraska back in. Down by a half dozen. Evans with the set in the middle, but it's too strong. Yeah, and you know, Ohio State's defense has to recognize um, that Alec had an error in the middle to end the first set, and now an error. So you have to kind of guess, where is the setter going to go? Is she going to go back to the middle or pins? And that's where you can kind of guess as a middle blocker. The tendency of a setter, where are they going to put the ball? That time, a big swing by the outside hitter, uh, Krause for Nebraska. Much needed point there to end that 
um, yeah, streak there Krause, that from Ohio State. Uh, Krause, eight swings, finally getting her first kill of the match. 10-6 Nebraska. Again, a marathon affair opening set, 31-29 in favor of the Buckeyes. Needed six set points to seal the deal. A service error for Cuban. The eight next weekend on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Now, what you expect when you've got six Big Ten teams in the top 16 of the nation and a trio in the top six, again, all vying for the top spot right now in the conference. Alex turned to serve with the Huskers up four. First contact from Morbitzer. And Gonzalez punishing one to the floor. Well, that was a tough serve that came Sarah Sue Morbitzer's way, and she handled it so well. That was outside her body, off her left hip. And then you see Gonzalez. That's the type of set that she needs. It, the, the apex of the ball needs to be at her highest point, and then she will rip it as she did on that last swing. Gonzalez may be starting to find her form. Half dozen kills now for her. And Nebraska off kilter point Buckeyes. And that's Ani Evans. You know, we talked about Nebraska running a 6-2. Ani Evans in, then Nicklin Haynes in. Hard to get in rhythm with your middles when you have two different setters. Uh, John Cook's team watching their lead evaporate. It's down to two here in the second. Nebraska and Ohio State. It went five the first time around. Got the feeling like we might be here a while in yeah. the rematch in Columbus, especially when you have two teams that are so provisioned at keeping the ball alive. Yeah, we're seeing just some spectacular digs on both sides of the net, and then even plays that, you know, balls are going off the block in the pursuit of those. Both teams just have some spectacular players on the backcourt that are allowing the offense to be run and so neither team can get into much confidence in terms of hey I'm just going to thump this ball and it's over. You've got to play and understand you're going to have to take multiple swings on the field. Kevin still in in this serving spot for Nebraska. Long dive down the line. They have dialed her number a lot and she has delivered but Got to figure the Buckeyes going to need to continue to use all of their options to withstand this Husker charge. Yeah, as good as Emily Londot is, and boy, she's really good tonight with 15 kills hitting 481. What got Ohio State here on top of the conference is having a balanced offense. So Matt Pedraza has got to find a way of getting outside hitters involved. In Buckeyes on an 8-3 scoring push. Norbitzer. Work along the back line. Gonzalez with a rip, and Rodriguez can't handle it, and the Buckeyes pull even at 11. Rodriguez getting that dig, and then Look at this, Sarasu Morbitzer. We're talking about the backcourt defense right now, keeping balls alive. And then it's that deep cross-court shot into the corner for Ohio State that Rodriguez has a hard time handling. It's miss serve though. Boy, that's an easy point. You gotta work so hard for it, you don't wanna give up points from the service line. Yes, we played an extended first set, 31-29. We're not to 15 in the second set. And we've already got four players Double digits in <laughs> digs, and another one on the doorstep in Gonzalez, who is nine. Roll shot from Gonzalez. Teams set it. Boy, rocket snap of the wrist there for Batenhorst. She'll go again and into the bucket block. 
when a ball is set a little bit tighter, the advantage goes to the block. This one was dying inside a little bit, a little too tight. So Batenhorst didn't have the opportunity to go high off the blocker's hands. We talk about tempo and location and how important the location is. If that ball would have been just a little bit higher, it would have given Batenhorst the opportunity to go off the blocker's hands. That set did not allow her to do that. Three team blocks a piece here for these squads, and it's Horde finishing things off with an end. Kill number four for Caitlin Horde. And Nebraska watching the Buckeyes surge back, striding back out in front. In the middle, going for Powell, but not able to put that in. But here's what I like. I like the direction that Powell was going into the right back-ish area of the court. Now, you've got a great defensive player there, Nicklin Haynes, but you have Rodriguez on the other side. So I think she'd be more successful mixing up her shot rather than going right at Rodriguez. Well, Kenzie Knuckles serve off the net. Problematic for the Buckeyes, who kept it rolling. Termination personified. Well, this is a roll shot by Nebraska, and boy, Ohio State made them pay for that by that cross court missile from Londot. 16 kills overall for Londot. Speaking of missiles. Cubic turning and wailing on that one straight down cross court. The competitive excellence by Cubic. I love it. And you know what? She is just so experienced and composed. The All American there for Nebraska. She has so many shots. I love that one. Power cross court after Londot just made Nebraska pay for one. She comes right back with a fiery shot. And now the block out of bounds. From Alec, point for Jen Flint Oldenburg's team. They've shown some resilience here in the second set to roll back in. Last assist for Ohio State, Mac Pedraza moving up the ranks now at a tie for fifth all time in Buckeye history of that category. Rodriguez. Working it over for Cubic. Moore at the tip of the net. First contact there from Lonstein, but nobody else able to get there. Yeah, that's an unfortunate error for Nebraska. A well-placed tip by Ohio State right over the block. And you can see that Hames was going for it, but she slid, and there was no way she could pick up that ball. And here you see what makes Jen Flynn Oldenburg such a fun coach to play for. She is fiery and excited. She coaches with emotion, and that's how her team plays best. Always feels a little more special at your alma mater when you used to wear the uniform, like Flynn Oldenburg did. Lonstein into the teeth of the Ohio State block. Nebraska's block, rightly so, regarded as among the best in the nation. But the Buckeyes have been there tonight. We'll take a look at this defensive get by Murr. Again, Londot keeping the ball alive. Free ball over to Nebraska. Roll shots all over the place. This time, Lonstein wanted to get a swing for the win, and she came right into the belly of the block. First lead of set two for the Buckeyes. They trailed by six at one point. Got to factor some of that skill, some of that emotion, especially when you have the crowd at Cavelli Center behind you. With us, Audrey, and said, you know, it all started. Coach Terry Pettit, they used to get the volleyball after a football game, but it shows you, as Cook says, we set the model for what can be done, and it's now exploding across the country. Yeah, I think what you see at the Covelli today is exactly what you said, the model that Nebraska has set in women's volleyball. Now everybody is chasing attendance records, and everybody is supporting women's volleyball, and it's because of the standard that Nebraska has set. You saw some of those other historic venues and their sellout streaks and it's matched here by what the Huskers have done. It's remarkable, 
And John Cook saying, you know, grassroots, the sport exploding across the country, and really what his program has done at home. He didn't match it with Nebraska football, Notre Dame football, the Cowboys, <laughs> yeah. European yeah. soccer there at Bayern Munich in Germany. It's tremendous. And the pull away from Moore, as you hear the crowd at Covelli go into it's funny. When we talked with Jen Flynn Oldenburg, she said, you know, seeing this facility every day, I pinch myself. Yeah. That people now have to get their tickets early. Sold out, there's a resale market for tickets here in Columbus, much like there would be at Nebraska. Yeah, it is pretty cool. And I'm telling you what, the fans here at the Cavelli, they love Ohio State volleyball. And going back to Nebraska, the product that both of these teams put on the floor, Nebraska, four national championships, 10 final fours. I mean, what more could you want? These girls compete hard, and we're seeing a great product here tonight. And a big product up front right now from Nebraska as that is thumped down by Lindsey Krause, who's come off the bench and delivered some nice moments for this Husker team with her second kill of the match. 17 apiece. Little cleanup there with Buckeyes down on the court. And ready to serve. Cubic will put it in play. Gonzalez cross court. Rodriguez, who's been tracking her seemingly all night with another dig. Dump there for Pedraza. And this is exactly why Nebraska's left side attacker, left side blocker, has to stay on top of Mac Pedraza. So here you see Mac, the ball is dug right to the net. She is an attacker, but you got Londot there in the right back area of the court. Should she choose to flip it back, lots of area for Londot. So just the fact that Mac Pedraza scored on attack opens things up even more for Londot in the backcourt. Yeah, the Huskers. Hanging with the Buckeyes here after watching that six-point lead at one juncture of this set evaporate. Becca Alec, highly touted freshman out of Waverly High School right there in the backyard of the Cornhuskers. Enrolled in the spring, came in, and it's been a factor right from the get-go for this national runner-up program from a season ago. Service error for Alec. It's important as a server, you have to have a high point of contact, and you almost want to hold your hand after you make contact on the ball. When you bring it down, you see what happens there. The ball gets served into the bottom of the net. Evans. That's Peyton Horse on the outside. Buckeyes denied it. Peyton Horse. Her block dug by Morbitzer. Spectacular again. Gonzalez tried to just push it down. That's long. Point Ohio State. <laughs> Sarah Sue Morbitzer, the heart and soul of this team, defensively saves a huge point. Kylie Moore giving her hugs, loving the effort here. Take a look at that. Key pancake save. Great defense on both sides of the net. And then this shot, you know that Nebraska was going for the hands, missed it. Big point for the Buckeyes. And a multiple point lead here for Ohio State. Evans for Horde. And that one just inside the line. We'll see if the Buckeyes use the challenge. Both coaches immediately came off the bench. That was Brian Wright and Jen Flynn Oldenburg. Well, let's clean that up. They did rule a touch there, yeah. so point to the Buckeyes. First thought it was going to be Nebraska point, but they ruled a touch. So John Cook has the green card out once another look. Well, let's see if they're calling a touch or in or out. It's let's see if we get some clarification on that as our officials Bill Thornburg and Josh Hall work their way to the monitor to look. 
either way on the floor ruled point Ohio State. Okay, so I believe the lines person called the ball in, overruled, and they called it out, which gave the point to Ohio State, and I think that's why Coach Cook is challenging this one. Whether it was a touch or in and out, they're gonna review the whole thing. So John Cook feels like his team won that point. So we'll see how this all ends up. We'll hopefully get to see a replay. But Jen Flynn, even at Oldenburg, even though it's such a tight, match tight second set she's just having a great time on the sideline and i think that that personality and kind of a laid-back attitude is reflected in her team they don't get too bent out of shape let's take a look at the replay here so again still some thought that maybe they are challenging for a touch at the net And that would be Lawn Dot's left hand that they may be looking at. Well, either way, the call remains the same. Point to the Buckeyes, the Nebraska losing a challenge here, which yep. is big in this big match. Yeah, it is huge, and it is a huge point for Ohio State that those challenges, boy, they are tough because I thought that ball actually was in, but on the replay did look out. Again, the ruling on the court, no touch, ball out. That's the way it stays. Big play there. So instead of it being one point affair, Buckeyes up three. And this call against Ohio State, net violation. It'll be Hames serving. And and the player that missed the first matchup out with an injury at a month or so out of action for the Huskers as her fifth double-double this season already in the assist and dig category with 15 and 12. Murr popping it up. Rodriguez off speed. And they'll say it is down. Point Buckeyes. Glad to have your thoughts here on social media tonight. B1G block party. Yeah, not quite deer <laughs> season, but it's Husker and Buckeye season right now. Volleyball and a gift indeed to watch this one tonight, especially that opening set. And we may be ticketed for extra volleyball here in set two. I think the first comment was so great. You know, this is a treat to watch. This is high level volleyball, lots on the line. Both teams are fighting for a Big Ten title and this match is critical. Two teams with only one conference loss at this point. Boy, Buckeyes able to work it efficiently against Caitlin Horde, nation's block leader and get a critical point. Kylie Murr to serve. And Buckeyes, six errors, no aces. Rodriguez saved that from being an ace. And the swing down the line from Kubik, too strong. Set point, Ohio State. The swing from Cuban. Hames back to Cuban. Buckeyes ready again, but Moore can't keep it alive. And Nebraska stays alive in the set. Yeah, Moore had some awkward angles to deal with on the bump sets to her in those out of system plays. But nonetheless, Ohio State in the driver's seat here with set point. Rodriguez serving. 
Pedraza for Landa. Knuckles diving to keep it up. Raider blocked out of bounds. Ohio State gets this set victory in regulation. 25-21 and a two sets to none lead in this battle of top six ranked teams in the nation. The Covelli crowd loving life. Their Buckeyes extended big time in the opening set. And the Buckeyes rally from six down in set two to become just a set away from the win. Six players uh, throughout both teams. Already double digits in the dig category, including Emily Londot, who's got her 10th double-double of the season. 17 kills, 10 digs, as we begin what for Nebraska is a must-win set three to avoid, avoid loss number three of the season. First point there, Baton Horse, when she has taken swings, good things have happened here for Nebraska. Yeah, that time just changing it up slightly with a little roll shot in the middle of the court and Ohio State's defense tried to track it down, just not quite fast enough to get that roll shot. She has a team high nine kills for Nebraska. And out. Let's put in perspective, again, the fight for first here, Wisconsin in the lead right now after winning at Maryland last night. So the winner of this one stays even with the Badgers. But for Nebraska, their only losses this season, one at non-conference and four sets to Stanford. And the 3 nothing sweep at Wisconsin. That's it for a team that's won 22 of its first 24. And there you see the top three in the standings with one of these teams going to stay equal with Wisconsin for first. Yeah, and, and that's why there's so much on the line. John Cook said there's not a lot of room for error. We're only like two weeks left in the Big Ten season. So, you know, the win here today for either team sets it up nicely going into the last two weekends of the season. Pedraza running right the middle. get the contribution she's been looking for, her third kill. Well, I think it's so important and very smart of Mac Pedraza to set Adria Powell a couple times here. You can see how it was beautifully placed in the open area along the net. And again, this is going to make Nebraska's block think a little bit before releasing to the pins. Well, they didn't have an ace in the first meeting in Lincoln against the Huskers, but they do have one now, thanks to Murr. Now Kylie Murr hitting her target, and that was a tough one because Nicklin Haynes was running across, almost provided a little bit of a block to her passers, so she couldn't see the ball. And Buckeyes fewest aces per set against the team that it's the toughest to ace against in the Big Ten. And well, there's no way to stop that from Londa, just on and for kill 18. Well, not only is she getting a big time kill, but she's able to get a kill against a great defensive player. Rodriguez is on the line, ready to dig. There's just too much power behind Londot's swing right now. Rodriguez unable to control it. How about the effort from Knuckles running into the hallway to try to keep that one alive? Hames for Hoare, who goes wide. And the Buckeyes starting to build a lead here, up three. If you're John Cook, what's an important message to your team now in this must-win set? Well, they train for this. So believe in your training. Understand that it comes with good passing and serving. And so he wants his team to stay aggressive. They've started setting middle a little bit to open up things to the outside. Right now, Ohio State's defense really looking solid. Boy, Murray and company, another phenomenal effort. And that one is out again, making a 5 nothing run for the Buckeyes. And John Cook forced to take a timeout. The all-around game from Ohio State has been spot on throughout the night. And the Covelli crowd love it. Buckeyes trying to make this a three-set sweep at home, up four in set three.
Nebraska number one in hitting percentage defense in the nation, Ohio State. Off to a 600 clip here in the third. And the defense right there, too, for the Buckeyes, who really have found a groove. A look at this block here. Janation Moore just not being fooled by the quick attack, the decoy by Horde, and focusing on her hitter, the one that's gotten so many sets, and that's Lonstein for Nebraska. So Janation Moore really queuing up and being there on time for her hitter. Kubik off hands. Gonzalez roaming back to get it. Longed out. Another rip. Rodriguez bumped up for Kubik. That's the knock. Now hands pops it up. Roll shot, Kubik. Longed out. Straight fire again. Knuckles down to save. Looked like a put down before Rodriguez flew in. Court from Cubic, maybe that'll bolster Nebraska. Man, the defense really leading to some extended plays and some wonderful comments from <laughs> folks chiming in at B1G block party. Yeah, crazy good defense. You can't get enough. It's what championship teams are made of. Defense is an attitude, and both of these teams showing so much swagger in the backcourt today. Join the conversation there, hashtag B1G block party. Again, double contact there for the Buckeyes. Nebraska looking to get a string of points going, potentially on the serve of Rodriguez. Pedraza for more. Well, that one off the tape and to the floor. Sometimes you're good and sometimes you're just lucky. That one a little bit of lady luck on Janesha Moore's side. Like you said, trickling off the net and in the cross court area of Nebraska's court. When it's going your way, it goes and it has been here at home for the Buckeyes. Haynes back for Lonstein sauntering in to go off speed. Haynes wants Alec. Boy, fired that with the fingertips. Lonstein able to punish the block. You know, when you're playing in the Big Ten, you have to have a never say it's over kind of attitude. And that's what Ohio State's defense was like in that play. They pursued the ball spectacularly, but it was all Lonstein at the end there, using the block, finding an open area of the court. Oh. Ranging in. Heady <laughs> play from Cubic to go off speed, but the Buckeyes somehow salvaged that. Pedraza, that's tipping in for more, and that's a kill. In that rotation, Nicklin Haynes is up front row blocking Janesha Moore, a perfect set to her. Look at that defensive effort, first to save the point, then she gets the set, and here she goes over top. What a great shot there. You see how her contact point is way above Nicklin Haynes' block. An easy kill there for Moore. And a great look for Janasia Moore. The all-around game is improving, not just in the kill category. She's got eight of those tonight. And Lombard still leading the way with 18. Cubic, Batenhorst, each with nine for Nebraska. And looking to get other contributions, like Krause and company. Yeah, Krause, good shot there. Again, can't worry about the score so much. You've got to play each point independently. Work your butt off to get that point. Krause delivers a huge one for her team. Nebraska hitting at 139 for the match, but under 100 here in this critical third set. Cubic, another superior effort for a save. And Gonzalez with maybe her best rip of the night. 
Jack Kubik saving the play, a spectacular effort on her part. Look at that change of direction, laying out, doing anything to keep the ball off the court. But this in-system set is a perfect tempo, perfect location. Gonzalez just making Nebraska pay for that free ball. Up the middle for Alec. And the freshman delivering, trying to see if she can get hot. Four kills now in the match for the special product here from Lincoln. Number five, ready to author the latest serve. Lowen hits the tape. And Powell able to find an open spot in the back. Well, just when you think Pedraza's gonna go outside to the heavy arm of Gonzalez, she flips it back to Powell. And Powell delivering a great kill for her team. You know, it's important for everybody to contribute. And so Pedraza to not set the expected set is really smart on her part. Remember, Ohio State won that lengthy opening set. Londot carried them with a dozen kills. One by four in the second set with a little more balance and up four here in the third with that balance as well. Well, Nebraska trying to change things up. We'll talk about that in a second. Right now, don't forget, you can stream volleyball live at the Big Ten Plus app as the Huskers head to Iowa City for a matchup with the Hawkeyes. The Buckeyes take on the Terps in College Park. There's no plus like home. Download the Big Ten Plus app and subscribe right now. Kennedy Orr saw some action against the Buckeyes early in the season, saw time when Nicklin Hames is out. And now John Cook going to the bench to try to change the dynamic. Right, and they just rotated. So Haynes is back in, but Kennedy Orr was in um, in place of Ani Evans as the setter. So we'll see if that is the role that John Cook has for Orr in the rest of this third set. Nebraska trying to find a spark right now as they're still playing catch up here against Ohio State. Five point lead for the number six team in the land here in set three. Gabby Gonzalez, Georgia native, flourishing here in Ohio. Launstein, certainly not shy. Tags the block for kill seven for her on the evening. Well, Lonstein has been a highlight for this Nebraska team on the outside. She is hitting right now. She's got seven kills, four errors, 27 to 10. So the hitting efficiency is only 111, but she seems to be getting kills at key moments to keep her team alive. And that's big just to keep them within range here of the Buckeyes. But again, I haven't seen too many lengthy Husker offensive strings of points that we have seen throughout the years of this dynasty program. Pedraza, tight quarters of the net. Big swing again from Longstein with the Buckeye defense. We've talked about the digs, but the block's not too shabby in this one, too. Right, and you know what? I think what's happening right now is the second contact for Nebraska is trapping the outside hitters a little bit. It makes it easier for the block. That Ohio State's block is reading these five and five sets, lining up perfectly and not getting blasted by the swings here. Really doing a good job of getting some points. That front row block for Ohio State. 6-2 block, excuse me, 6-3 block lead for the Buckeyes against one of the best blocking teams in the country. Ward delivering, checking out. 14-10 Ohio State. Pedraza all the way across for more. Pumped up there by Alec and neutralized by OSU. That block is deadly for Ohio State. For Nebraska, you've got to cover these balls. You've got to be able to keep the ball alive. I mean, that block is, is really making that ball go from hand to floor very quickly. But you've got to be low to the ground and expect to be blocked. Be there for your outside hitter. First matchup in Lincoln. 
Nebraska outblocked Ohio State 15-5. This time around, the Buckeyes with the upper hand in that category by four. And now Pedraza picking her spots effectively to go on two. And everybody giving Londot big hugs. She had a key dig there to keep the ball alive. Look at the big girl laying out. And then Pedraza, yes, effectively going up. She sees that the block is behind her. She takes advantage of attacking the ball to that right front area of the court. Second kill of the match for the Buckeye setter. 37 assists and eight digs as she guides the way potentially to a three-set sweep for this Buckeye team. Down the line there from Longstein. Off Ohio State and out. And now the sophomore looking to get hot from the service line. Pedraza going to long dot out of the back row. Cubic uses the block. And let's see Rodriguez for Nebraska keeping that ball alive. That was a thunderous shot by Londot that Rodriguez just dug it up like it was routine. And then Cubic delivering that kill off the blocker's hands. Letting it go. Saw the duck down from Gonzalez. And it is deep. And as we see the subs coming back in, it will be Kennedy Orr again working in in this 6-2 attack for John Cook right now, spelling Oni Evans. And John Cook doesn't want to run the 6-2 as he talked with us, but working for his team for a good chunk of the year. Again, players don't maybe get as many sets. More people have to play well with all the subbing in and out. It's worked wonders, but again, it's been difficult with Hames missing time and trying to find that setter that's really on point with everybody on the floor. Right, and one of the big advantages uh, to running the 6-2 for Nebraska is that block. It's a big block. They get good touches on the ball, which helps the backcourt defense when the ball is, if the block is set up perfectly, easy to dig around a well-placed block. Kennedy Orr going to the back and finding space there for Krause to finish. Well, Kennedy Orr just moving the ball around a little bit, delivers that nice set there. And again, it's that hole in the middle of every team's defense, right in that middle area of the court. You really got to read the hand of the hitter a little bit earlier and track that ball down. Fourth kill of the match for Krause. Huskers down three. Can they make a push here before it gets to 20? Back-to-back -back points will work. Baton Horse with a bash. And when Baton Horse gets a kill, boy, she celebrates. She looks into the eyes of her teammates and gets everybody fired up. Uh, the Huskers with some belief. Baton Horse has been big. Nebraska needs more of that. Here at Cavelli Center, it's been magnificent so far here between Nebraska and Ohio State. Huskers trying to keep us playing into a fourth set. How big is this match? They're watching it internationally. Is that Canada, I presume? Those are the true champs right there. My parents watching this match. I love them. I miss them. The Italian Stallions at 91 and 86. Cheers to both of you. God love you. In all seriousness, your mom been under the weather recently, yeah. so certainly we send our best wishes to her watching on proudly alongside Audrey Flaw, former Buckeye All-American. Parents watching at home, glad you're watching wherever you are. This has been a treat. Can we get more of it if the Huskers can keep this little surge running where the Buckeyes finish things off in straight sets? Nebraska saying, hang on a minute, the block becoming more of a factor. Yeah, and the block is keeping this Nebraska team emotionally charged. It is a great matchup here at the net action. Very compelling right now. I'm telling you what, this is Big Ten volleyball at its best. 4-0 run for the Huskers, ended by the service error. Boy, that's the ninth of this match for the Huskers against two aces. And it gives... The side out to the Buckeyes and Riley Raider at the ready to serve. 
four. And Tall Lord to come in off the bench cold, but she's seemingly given a spark when she's been on the floor. Big point there in Batenhorst front and center. Yeah, it's been a little sloppy, kind of unorthodox plays by the Huskers, but this roll shot really needs to get dug. It doesn't come over very quickly. It's just in the right spot out of Saracen Orbitz's reach. And sometimes, especially with a new setter, everybody else on the floor kind of fights for them a little bit more, and you're getting that sense here for the Huskers. Or yeah. the adjustment there for Krause, not enough. And the Buckeyes go back up by two. Yeah, when the ball is under set, take a look at the apex of this ball. It's dying right into the blocker's hands. That's an easy block if you're set up and um, facing the middle of the court with your hands. Gonzalez takes care of that bad set by Nebraska, getting a block point. Off the serve of Pedraza, Wondai trying to keep things going at the net, can't. And again, Nebraska looking to see if it can skate in front. Well, they just subbed in. Nicklin Hames comes in in the backcourt, of course. Lonstein, the spectacular right side attacker. So Nebraska needs these two players to get something done, get something going for their Huskers. Pedraza on the back. Denied by Hoare. Gonzalez rolling one over. Good get from Murray. Long dot cranking. Ford with the tip. Long dot, another blast. Cubic with the up. Morbitzer for Ohio State. Effort from Mark. And that one finally to the floor. Ohio stand with what feels like a massive point. You know, I'm just shaking my head and I'm giving the chef's kiss. You know, this is great play on both sides of the net. Whether you're a Husker fan or a Buckeye fan, you've got to appreciate good volleyball. And that's what you're seeing right now. And then finally, the aggressive swing by Gonzalez wins it for her team. But boy, we saw Hames with some great ups there in the right back area of the court for the Huskers. And again, Longstein, as she's done numerous times tonight when her team needs a point, she's the one that delivers it. That is her ninth put away of the game. Yeah, for just a sophomore, she's playing with so much confidence, aggressive arm. I just like the way she plays, and she's always putting herself in a good position to get a point. Pedraza running the middle, and Powell can't keep that one in. Nebraska levels it at 20 apiece. Is this the moment that the Huskers jet away to a needed set victory. Moore with first contact. That one right in the wheelhouse there. Powell not going to miss that. Well, Powell just knocked it, sucker punched Nebraska with that quick attack. The unexpected set again. You've got to be smart as a setter. You've got to be tricky. Look at the space. Lots of space. If she gets up and puts her elbow back, Mac delivers her the set. There's nothing but room for her to hit into it. Tip of the net from Hoare. Long dot denied. That's Cubic fired up alongside Caitlin Hoare. Well, they play for each other. That is the mantra of this Nebraska team. And Cubic there, she got that one for her team. And her team loves it, celebrates with her. Monster solo stuff. Buckeye still with the block lead. And the scoreboard lead. Long dot. Off the antenna. Nebraska leads. What a crazy set. This has been back and forth. This ball is set just a little great angle there. You can see just outside of the antenna. So Long dot just clips that ball into the antenna. Off the serve of Rodriguez. Moore with the tip. The layout from Haynes. Oh, heady stuff. 
so much smoke from her right arm. The changeup, perfect. Yeah, and it's not just the tip, it's where she puts the ball. It's in a difficult situation. You know, you want to keep it far enough away from Rodriguez into the middle of the court slightly, just perfectly placed by Londot. Londot with a season high 20 kills now, including 12 in that terrific performance in the opening set. Longstein continuing to elevate her game and thereby her team, Nebraska, back in front. Yeah, I love the fight from Nicklin Hames to deliver the tough set. Here she's racing forward, moving it back and putting it not only to Lonstein, but in a perfect spot for her to score. Huskers two points away from keeping us going. Make it one. Super serve. And the Huskers on the verge of sending us to a fourth set. What a response here from number four of the nation. Well, you have to have the confidence from the service line, and confidence is exactly what number 13, Lonstein, has. She delivers a missile, and her team absolutely loves it. You're going to win tight matches against formidable opponents by serving tough and passing well. Nebraska's serving game has been pretty solid. Lonstein, at a critical time, goes back with confidence and delivers a missile. And it goes in the books as the third ace of the match for Nebraska, 24th of the season for Longstein, averaging about one per match for the Huskers, who are a point away from keeping us rolling here from Columbus. Again, you look at the tweets, join us, hashtag B1G Block Party, one of the most intense games they've seen this year. The defense incredible. Yep. Can I hit like? Is there a like <laughs> button on my monitor here? Like, like, like. Exactly. We agree completely. It has been superb. Again, you've got, so far, we're not even through three full sets, and there are almost 150 digs in yeah. this match. Yeah, you know, and part of it, too, we talk about what makes a team a good defensive team. It's blocks. These guys are blocking. They're setting up. Not only are they getting points from their block, but they're getting good touches, which results in digs. But even when they don't get a stuff block or a touch, the backcourt defense knows how to line up around a well-placed block. So these hitters are hitting some incredible shots. And if you're down low and in position and you're courageous enough, you're going to make some great digs. We've seen it on both sides of the net. Truly two elite teams going at it. Service error out of the time. Out for Longstein to Ohio State try to navigate another set point. Remember, set two, Buckeyes were down by six and screamed all the way back to the victory. In this set, Nebraska was down six at 16 10, and they're on the verge of coming back to take it and another timeout taken. Yeah, John Cook calling a timeout, trying to ice Sarah Sue Morbitzer, who's back there on the line to serve, and it's important. When you're on the line, you can't just send a little lollipop over the net because that's going to get jammed down your throat. Sarah Sue Morbitzer has a tough task. She has to go back. She's got to serve a tough ball that's going to put Nebraska out of system. And John Cook talked about it. We asked him about his team being so tough to serve against. Again, they're the hardest team to ace in the Big Ten. He said, we take pride in that, in our passing. And his team usually comes up with the goods in a lot of the defensive categories, and it helps when you've got the Big Ten Freshman of the Year from last season in the back in Lexi Rodriguez. Yeah, Freshman of the Year and Defensive fresh, uh, defensive Player of the Year. Such a spectacular player. She's fast. She can run down those tips. Take a look at how she just extends to get her hand under the ball. She keeps the ball alive, always giving her team a chance to transition and swing for a win. I love the way she plays. Not only is she skilled, she is gutsy, courageous, and a true asset to this Nebraska team. 31-29 in the opening set. That may be foreshadowed how good this one would be. 25-21 in the second for Ohio State. And Nebraska a point away from keeping this crowd at Covelli Center occupied a little bit longer in watching this one and all you from wherever you're witnessing it on Big Ten Network. Yet another capacity crowd here. At this place that is packed and pumped. There'll be a little downtrodden here if the Huskers get this point. Wow. Ohio State coming up with a massive ace. Wow, we 
talked about the importance of Sarah Sue Morbitz's serve out of the timeout. Right between two of the better passers for Nebraska, and they just let that ball drop. Well, oh, must win point for the Buckeyes. They get it. Kubik this time. And multiple Ohio State players on the floor, but three ball opportunity to Nebraska. And Kubik does not miss. Cross court screamer to the deck. Well, that one was close, but a cross court key swing. Take a look at this ball. Sharp cross court, thumb down, just inside that 10 foot line. Unbelievable shot by Maddie Kubik. What a stud at a critical time. Three Huskers and double figures and kills. Kubik, Baton Horse with 11. Lonstein with 10. Third set point for Nebraska here in set three. <laughs> Off the block and out, Ohio State stays alive. And for the second time in three sets, we get bonus volleyball. Yep, game to two here. You've got to remain composed despite the pressure. You've got to have fire in your belly, but calmness in the head. You've got to play tough. Good get from Rodriguez. Baton horse delivering. And the sophomore maybe flies under the radar just a little bit, but not in this one. Yeah, she is showing the will to win here, taking big swings really being a key outside hitter. It often comes down on the shoulders of the outside hitter. I love her fist pump. She is fired up. 12 kills hitting 300. Another chance for the Huskers to close it. But the Buckeyes stay alive again. Fortunate hop off the tape of the net. Woo! Everybody in this place is just breathing a sigh of relief after that one. Thought it was stuff blocked, but rolls off the net in bounds. Again, a game to two. Another top, Pedraza serving. 30th tie of the match, eighth in this set alone. Long dive, blocked. What a shutdown up front from the Huskers. <laughs> they read it perfectly, lined up well with Lawn dot, you're going to see right here. There's the move by Batenhorst. She takes off early and is there on time, seals the net, and then again delivering that fist pump celebration for her team. All the offense from the sophomore. That block may be her biggest contribution. Gives Nebraska another set point. And that one, not good enough. They were celebrating thinking the point was over. And it's point Ohio State. <laughs> John Cook is irate. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of have to say the assistant coach took the green card and took it and said that we got to do a replay on that one. So John Cook taking it out of his hands and saying some choice words to the down official. That ball was down is his thought. Let's see. Yeah, looks like it. Looks like it was down, yep. And again, the Huskers all seem to realize it. They were in celebration mode. Buckeyes kept playing on. The officials followed play, called it point Ohio State after the Huskers couldn't handle things at the net. And it will go to Nebraska. The challenge works. John Cook will keep it, and more importantly, he and his team will keep competing. Nebraska, 28-26 in the third. To the fourth we go. Buckle up. The wild ride continues from Columbus. Back here in Columbus with these two teams playing at such a high level. Let's take a look at what the selection committee has been looking at, what they released as their top 10 at their most recent juncture of the season here in these two teams in that group. Yeah, I would think that the committee would look very closely to this match and just the atmosphere here and how competitive the Big Ten Conference is as, a, as it relates to the other conferences. Boy, you've got to have Nebraska in the mix there, but Ohio State, my goodness, Big numbers, big time for the Buckeyes. 14 set points, and again, throughout the three sets to finally put things away for the respective teams. 30 ties, nine lead changes. Dare we say 
as we said at the top of the telecast, that the sequel never lives <laughs> up to the original. Five set thriller in Lincoln in September. This one has really brought the goods. Yeah, it is a nail biter. And if you paid a little extra for your ticket to get into the Cavalli, money well spent. It is a treat to be here in person. The atmosphere is outstanding. But if you're watching this on the network, as we hope you are, I'm telling you what, it is a fantastic game. This one can go any which way. It's the team that minimizes their errors and plays aggressively. Serve and pass is always the key. Fourth set underway. And Nebraska will take the first point. Baton Horse up front. Again, let's remember what's at stake. We showed you that national perspective and how this game would affect potential seeding maybe for the upcoming NCAA tournament. Both of these teams are headed there, but more importantly, in the Big Ten. Wisconsin won last night. Badgers at 15-1 overall in conference play. The winner of this one will stay tied for first. The other slips down to 14-2 and, and a little bit off the pace. Pedraza for Gonzalez. Morbitzer had to track all the way back as that one was going to be in. That one is down for Gonzalez, but Audrey, remember, in the conference landscape for Nebraska, despite all the success, haven't won the Big Ten title since 2017. And for Ohio State, almost three decades, as you well know, 1994, the last time they were conference champs. You're absolutely right. And so both teams so hungry to get that title. And this match, critical in order to stay in the hunt for that Big Ten championship. Long dot. Again, with a freebie up front, and she mashes it down here to give Ohio State the early lead in the set. One dot with kill number 21 for her on the night. Games for Hull. Buckeyes got a piece. Huskers return the feed. Ronstein launching. Man, she is pumped up. Yeah, and just a sophomore, so many years ahead of her to do exactly what she's doing tonight. She is carrying a load for this Husker team, and she's playing with confidence and ease, hitting from that left side pin just as spectacularly as she does from the right pin. Well, we saw her explode in that big setting for the Huskers against Creighton in Omaha in September when she had a career-high 25 kills on that magical night. Hames looking for Cubic will be a point for the Buckeyes. See if the Huskers can extend Ohio State to five. Hasn't happened for the Buckeyes that much this year. They've only played three five setters all season in 23 matches. The one against Nebraska and Lincoln, and both of them against Penn State. Two hotly contested affairs, and the put away there for OSU. It's just interesting how these teams dig the hard hits, and then sometimes those roll shots are the ones that score because it's the unexpected, and it's placed in just the right spot on the opposing team's defense. So that was Londot with the roll shot, poor kill. Both of these teams have all the shots, all the skills that are required to go deep into December. Murr with effective serving for Jen Flynn Oldberg squad. And the Buckeyes, like they've done a lot tonight, really lead here at the start of a set by three. So that one, too strong. You know, I have people ask me, why do they serve long? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to catch the passers with a ball that's up at their chest or shoulder. Anything that is served to somebody's knees or waist or even outside their body slightly is an easier pass to pass effectively. So when you see those balls going long, that's the serving strategy that they're trying to do. Janisha Moore been a little quiet lately, but that may get her going. She has her ninth put away of the night. Yeah, it's a perfect set for Janisha Moore, and she hits it not in the middle of the court, more to the right back area. Really difficult because it's out of reach from the right back defender. And she had 21 kills in the first matchup with the Huskers in Lincoln. Riley Rader 
when called upon, can deliver her third kill of the night. And again, what sets that play up is the touch block. It slows down the ball. It allows the defense to put that ball perfectly to Mac Pedraza. And then Raider, what she does so well is gets up quick, tips the ball in the open area. Pedraza mixing it up, and the Buckeyes leading the fourth. Let's take a look at tonight's State Farm State of Success. Emily Londot, ultra successful for the Buckeyes. Yeah, she has been the, the key to this team. And it's been interesting to see how she's performed despite not playing well the first time around. She has really elevated her game, playing with intensity, but calmness, even when she gets blocked, she is back in it. And she's just been a stud right now for the Buckeyes. 17 kills, 17 errors, hit zero in the first matchup. 22 kills, five errors, 362 tonight. And there is a touch at the net. Point for Nebraska, Long Dot. Boy, it helps when you can get tutelage from the likes of Nicole Fawcett to improve your game. Yeah, you know, Long Dot talks about Fawcett and how much she has taught her about how to deal with pressure situations. There you see the two of them talking. Of course, Nicole Fawcett, the Penn State four-time All-American, ABCA Player of the Year, played pro, and on the national team, you've got somebody like Fawcett on the bench. Boy, that is a huge advantage, especially to settle the outside hitters down. She's got all the experience and a great teacher on the court. And it still looks weird with the O on her <laughs> chest as opposed to that Nittany Lion logo, but Ohio native Nicole Fawcett grew up in the Zanesville area. And again, her time with USA Volleyball, including World Championship Gold in 2014. And it's great to pass down those skills. But yeah, her, for, her first full-time season as an assistant after being a volunteer, she's she's a Buckeye now. Uh, yeah, she's a Buckeye, yeah. And, and uh, you know, the Buckeye fans are happy she's a Buckeye. Wealth of knowledge on the bench for Ohio State. 8-4 here, OSU, trying to finish off Nebraska in four. And again, the Huskers starting to get some more hot swingers different than the ones leading early. And that time, it's Krause with another kill. Yeah, and Kennedy Orr, number nine, the setter for Nebraska, is in again. So Coach Cook making that change on the Evans, not setting as the other setter in this 6-2 rotation for the Huskers. And it works to get the Huskers that 28-26 win last set. One off the arm of Gonzalez works its way to the net. Boy, it pays to be aggressive, and that is exactly what Gonzalez is in that play. You know, she doesn't get all the way back, but she takes a two-step hop and just fires it as hard as she can off the blocker's hands. Again, not in the best transition position to get a full approach, but scores nonetheless. And Gonzalez with another double-double. One of four players to have one in this match. Gonzalez pops it back up, and Powell cranks it down. A Kennedy Orr setting back-to-back -back sets to the right side. It would have been difficult. The tougher set to make would have been the difficult set to the outside. And then Ohio State is in a position to transition. That jump set by Pedraza holds the middle for Nebraska and a nice swing of, out of the middle for a point. Danger spot here for the Huskers with the Buckeyes getting another killer block and the lead out to six. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Cook does. He has a deep bench, and he will maybe try some other people just to see if he can get back into this critical fourth set. Uh, Pedraza with that block, doing a little bit of everything for a shoot. Long dot kept that one alive, and the Buckeyes just keep on coming along. And I think Coach Cope is going to call a timeout here to slow this one down. And look at JFO on the other side. What a fun coach she would be to play for. 10 3 run for the Buckeyes here, and they stretched it out to seven in this potential match ending fourth set for OSU. Now, the crowd here. Standing ovation again the Buckeyes won on the road at Purdue on Thursday night So they had a rare Friday night off at home 
So what did they do? They hit the theater with purpose. They saw the musical Hairspray and one of the leads in the show, Jen Flynn Oldberg's nephew? Yeah, Nicholas Cortazzo. And I'm telling you what, he talked to the team and he made some parallels between being on stage. Look at him. He has to be on every night. His cast members are his teammates. And you know what? They could see that parallel. They appreciated everything that he had to say. But step aside, J-Fo. There's another stud in this Flynn family. Nicholas, boy, what a lead role he had for Hairspray and is still going on at the Ohio Theater here in Columbus, Ohio. You know, coaches are always looking for inspiration and, and thoughts to keep their team on point. How unique is that to kind of tie in those parallels? Because again, you gotta be on every night. You gotta hit your marks. You have to rely in a cast on your teammates all around you. And you gotta do it on the road in different places. It's really neat. I, I, Kind of surprised I haven't thought of that right. parallel before. Right. Well, leave it up to Jen Flynn Oldenburg to, you know, have a nephew that is the lead in Hairspray and use that parallel. Why not? Yeah, it's, it's a great story. The Buckeyes had a great time at the Ohio Theater. Well, bravo, Nick, and bravo, both of these teams. Again, this has been a command performance of a high magnitude here in Long Dot. Again, seemingly can't miss when called upon. 23rd kill, excuse me, Audrey, yep. as she extends her season high. Yeah, that 5-0 scoring run for Ohio State. She nails it cross court to the right back area of the court, and Kennedy Orr could not handle it. The Buckeyes threatening to race away with the set four win. And again, Batenhorst, we've seen her deliver with power, now with the heady shot to hit that open space. Yeah, so how do you defend that tip? It is really the blocker's job to come down and anything that's really close to them, they can come down and play that ball high off the net, allow somebody else, if it's the setter playing that first ball, allow somebody else to set a five and five. Really difficult if you're asking the right back player to dig a deep line and get that tip. Here we see an interesting sub, a serving sub here for Nebraska. And Macy Bosiger, freshman, will check in. And spell Alec and try to get hot for the Huskers. Murr, good first pass. Londot putting it up. Gonzalez finds a way in her game, Audrey, so deceptive. Yeah. And so what she took advantage of was a block was coming down as she was attacking that ball. Take a look at the timing here. Block is coming down and just not aggressive over the net. And you see how there's some space between Horde's hand and the net. Gonzalez takes advantage of that space. Reading the defense for kill number 16 of the match for the senior. And another point for the Buckeyes off the antenna and nothing going right in this stretch for the visitors. Yeah, Kennedy or really liking that right side set to Krause. That time the ball is set a little too far. Krause hitting that antenna. Biggest lead of the match for either team here at nine. On the block. <laughs> Get the sense that that might fall too in for Ohio State, but it's out and Nebraska now the time to start a run is now. Yeah, and on the back of Nicklin Haynes, she is a spectacular server and defender. We'll see if she can save some points or get points from the service line, save some points defensively playing that right back arrow to court. 28 assists, 20 digs for Haynes, and that one a big time serve request. That's where experience, composure, and gutsiness, this tough cookie goes back and just serves a really tough ball for Moore to handle. She is two of the five aces for the Huskers. Morbitzer able to get to that one. Rodriguez another day. Down the line. The Huskers can't keep that in. Ohio State with a point. John Cook says, I don't know about that. Strides up with a green card, wants a challenge. He's looking for a touch. 
Well, Baton Horse has been using and abusing the block all night. We'll see if she actually got a touch on this one from the angle we're sitting. It's tough to see, but let's take a look at that. If it touched Londot's arm, I don't believe it touched her hand, but let's see if it... I don't see a touch there. I was looking for the hand. I don't see it touching the hand. And then I'm looking to see if it maybe hit her, her forearm, her elbow there. And I don't see, I don't see a touch. What do you see? Let's look at this other angle to see. <laughs> we have a little more definitive answer. Boy. I don't see it hitting. Below the fingers, but. You know, it's tough with the righty moving the ball down the line. Is right. it? Man, that's the question, too. Does the spin of the ball change? It looks like it, it kind of goes a little bit down, but is that just the angle of yeah, attack Yeah, that's the there? trajectory of the ball off of the tip. So I think she was going for it. It definitely doesn't hit Londot's hands. And whether it swipes past her forearm there, that is where, yeah, okay, no touch. And it remains. Point to the Buckeyes, John Cook now out of challenges throughout the remainder of this set. If we go to five, he would get the bonus challenge that both teams get. So a little potential mini surge for Nebraska thwarted. And now the Buckeyes look at it. Keep trucking towards the finish line. Trying to make it 14 straight victories. Horst, bidding for another kick. And the block is out of bounds. Nebraska was there, but Moore using that block effectively. And prior to that, the critical touch on the block, the control touch results in an easier dig, and then the wipe off from Jen Moore. Again, Ohio State pulling away in this fourth set. Ames, Longstein. Tooling the block that time. Nebraska with the side out. Longstein's 12th kill. She is doing exactly what Nebraska needs her to do at critical times. She is swinging big with confidence. She's hitting 184, though. 38 attempts on 12 kills and five errors. Now, Long, Longstein watching Batenhorst be the top gun for Nebraska tonight. Career high 15 kills for the sophomore, hitting a team best 263. Janisha Moore, great read and execution. You just feel like everything is working right now for Ohio State. They're getting some easy touches on the ball, and then that touch that falls right over top of the block again. Really tough for Nicklin Haynes to dig a deep line and play that tip. Haynes going for Blonstein down the line. Rodriguez popping it up. Cubic. A crushing ball handled by Murr. Pedraza, quick in the middle. Riley Raider right there. As a setter, you have got to love when you have a middle that gets up every time. She hasn't gotten a ton of sets, but she never stops going in hard. Look at that dig. The ball stays alive, and then yeah, you gotta love when Radar goes up and makes yourself available. It doesn't matter how many sets you get, you have to go up every single time. Again, it's been a dig fest tonight. Both of these liberos, stupendous. 24 digs each for Murr and Rodriguez. Cubic there, and Buckeyes victimized. Yeah, Hames put Cubic in a great situation to score. Ohio State's block slow to close on that one. There is space between the blockers, and Cubic makes them pay just popping that ball in the middle of the court. Anytime you see a ball being hit and it goes right in the middle of the court, you know that's Block's ball. That's the blocker's responsibility to get a touch on that ball. Buckeyes still lead in the block category, 9-6. Again, against one of the blocking forces in the nation. The Raider trying to pump it back quarter. It's long, and Nebraska is this the time they make a push. Well, they have to at this point, and you have to serve tough 
and then play some disciplined blocking and backcourt defense. But serving tuck is the key to get this offense of Ohio State out of system. And an ace. Little miscommunication. Buckeyes let it go, and it fell in. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't even close. It was in by a lot. So again, Ohio State, you need to call that ball as you open up and you give yourself an opportunity to see the line and the ball kind of at the same time. You can't let those balls drop for easy points. Sixth ace in the match for the Huskers. And they fortify that big point with another to make it 19-13 and force the Buckeyes to call timeout. Well, it went five the first go round in Lincoln, and Nebraska would like a repeat of that performance, trying to send us to the maximum <laughs> allotment of sets here tonight. Huskers feeling it on the comeback. John Cook in Nebraska hoping this thrill ride in Columbus can continue his team. Battling back, still down six, trying to send this matchup between top six teams in the country to a fifth set. Again, the winner remains at a tie with first with Wisconsin. The loser slips to solo position in third in the conference with two weekends and four games for each team remaining. And boy, this run extended. That's Cubic make it five in a row for Nebraska. Yeah, Kenzie Knuckles with a key dig going cross court, reading the play perfectly. Lines up, gets a great dig, and then it's Cubic. The composure and the just the gutsiness, never say die attitude that Maddie Cubic has. That's why she's captain. That's why she's an All-American. And this Nebraska team only conference loss at Wisconsin. Only two losses all year against 22 of the win cup. And Rodriguez smacks it long. We should note that Nicklin Haynes is still in. She is setting in the backcourt, and she will play one rotation in left front. And I think this Nebraska offense runs pretty crisp when she's running the offense. Haynes. Chris pass. Boy, the first content went back over. Knuckles had to be alert to keep it going, and Nebraska gets the quick side out. Alert and quick. She's facing the net, has to turn around, play that ball, and then play it in a spot where Hames can set the ball. So she is just such a valuable asset. Kenzie Knuckles in the backcourt for Nebraska. Again, one of the eight players with double-digit digs in this match, Kenzie Knuckles. Hames. for a player that can bring so much power. Her most critical shots in this set have been off speed. It's been intentional. They're putting it to Lonstein. Boy, Lonstein's a great offensive player, but making defensive moves that are away from her are really tough. That time, uh, Moore puts it out of reach of Lonstein intentionally in that area of the court, challenging her to play the ball. Three Buckeyes and double figures and kills. Three Huskers with 10 or more. And Alec, again, haven't heard a lot for this gifted freshman, but that's a big put away. Well, you talk about Hames running the offense. Look at Kennedy Orr just not having all kinds of confidence, pumping the ball to her middle. Alec, and boy, that is a big swing getting Becca Alec involved in the offense. Six kill for Alec Orr now with eight assists. Again, coming in off the bench to play a role in this potential Husker comeback, but another service error again. Make it 13 in the match for Nebraska, nine for Ohio State. Again, the Huskers have had six aces to offset, but Buckeyes three points away. Four going down to send that one to Batenhorn. Huskers scrambling to stay in the point. Rodriguez blocked just Point OSU. Sarah Sumorbitzer being a key component to the Buckeyes playing so well tonight. Really 
holding her own in that middle back position. And then this wipe off the block by Gonzalez. Nobody does it any better than Gonzalez. She's having a great night. Pedraza calls her own number to give the Buckeyes match point. Nebraska with a surge to make it intriguing, but Ohio State can end it here. Blocked out of bounds, and Ohio State has its payback. Lost in Lincoln, but conquering in Columbus. Number six in the nation beats number four, and the Buckeyes stay tied for first in the conference with Wisconsin after win number 14 in a row. This was a big one for the Buckeyes, and they are still in contention for a Big Ten title. This was huge, and I'm telling you what, the people in the Cavelli, they loved it. Fans everywhere that are Buckeye fans are cheering on this team. Wow, what a season they are having. Two more weeks.